uh, by the way, this is a very uh, informal uh, breakfast symposium. So after the talks, uh, please um, ask questions um, and have an interaction between the speakers and uh, whatever. Also, outside the scope of the different uh, lectures, don't hesitate to bring up questions. Questions are never, never stupid. So the uh, hybrid OR is the first topic, um, and it's a change in, uh, in landscape from uh, uh, open surgery to endovascular surgery, and uh, the endovascular procedures are very often combined with open uh, surgical techniques. So it's debatable whether you should stay uh, stay on talking about a hybrid procedure and not saying this is all surgery. That will be my keynote lecture uh, on Sunday when I try to explain that nothing is different from surgery because these technologies also belong to the surgical armamentarium. Everybody knows that um, um, the drivers for growth of the hybrid ORs is the change into endovascular surgery compared to open surgery. Uh, the procedures are really uh, taking a flight and um, the number of hybrid OR installed worldwide per year is shown on the lower part of the flight and it's uh, amazing. Uh, new techniques have been developed, uh, as I mentioned, uh, and that is, of course, not only for the uh, aorta, thoracic and abdominal, but also for the peripheral arterial disease, and not to forget, I will come to that later, also the venous disease, of course. The uh, mortality and morbidity are playing an important role. It's up to the physicians still to try to show that our results are at least comparable to the durability of the surgical procedures. And then, after that, we can talk about the quality of life, and the quality of life may truly improve uh, compared to open surgical procedures. And the financial drivers, if you make a, a business case in your own hospital and try to convince your uh, board that they should invest also in such, a, uh, in such equipment, is the shorter recovery time in the hospital or the ICU, and, of course, the flexibility uh, for open and interfessional uh, procedures in the same room. So you don't have to change uh, from rooms and you can just, uh, your, your program, your surgical program is focused then on, uh, on one uh, working site. Um, this shows you a short overview that, uh, in my view, uh, is important uh, uh, for more flexibility and adaptability of the X-ray uh, equipment. Uh, it's a, uh, a real operating table, uh, which has all the advantages that you uh, uh, can imagine. Um, the system should also be able to be moved out of the way. You have to work on both sides of the table. Um, and that is then different with the C-arm. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with the mobile C-arm. Hans Verhagen will try to convince you that that is the truth. That's the next speaker. Um, but um, having said that, uh, a hybrid room is different than a cat lab because uh, surgeons and also the anesthesiology that is necessary for the procedure uh, should have uh, a good flexible uh, movement space around the table and that is offered by a uh, ceiling uh, mounted system. Um, and of course the system should deliver high-end imaging that is extremely important for the more advanced uh, endovascular procedures. Um, building the hybrid OR, it's not simply putting the equipment in over there. Um, it should be um, ready for different specialists, um, uh, radiologists, of course, but also uh, urologists, gynecologists, and other medical specialties, uh, neurosurgery, uh, who want to work more minimally invasive. The OR environment, um, yeah, that has to give space to not only the surgeon and the OR uh, nurse, but also uh, high attention to the sterility 
I mentioned briefly already anesthesia, which is quite important. Um, and of course, um, you, if you have a real uh, hybrid procedure, you not only need the endovascular instrumentarium, but also the surgical uh, tools. So it needs, it's not a small room that you can uh, construct a, a hybrid room. This is uh, the, uh, our facility in uh, Utrecht. Uh, so uh, the other specialists not doing these procedures are quite jealous about this spacious uh, room in our hospital. But um, once you see a procedure like a fenestrated procedure, a complicated endovascular procedure, um, it turns out that every corner of this room is uh, being used um, and that it is not an uh, over uh, luxurious uh, uh, facility, but that it is very much needed to have uh, space for all these uh, uh, instruments and all the uh, monitors. Um, the optimization for greater consistency and efficiency, um, yes, then the table is of course a matter of discussion. Uh, in many cases there is um, the combination of the McKay uh, table with the Philips uh, uh, systems. Um, yeah, it's fully integrated, a flexible design, exchangeable uh, tabletops, which is important if you write a business case with, for example, as we did in Utrecht with the gynecologists and the neurosurgeons, then you need to change from table. Um, and um, yeah, to, to as I wrote here, uh, the patients in virtually any position. Uh, it's... Um, uh, easy to change with this uh, McKay system and worth to, uh, to take a look at it. Uh, the ceiling mounted uh, is a good solution. Um, I don't want to uh, make the next presentation, um, you know, uh, the second one, <laughs> if you say this. Um, but, um, yeah, it, 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 it is very... Um, very worthwhile to, to consider a ceiling mounted uh, uh, position uh, uh, in this uh, operating uh, room. Smallest footprint <coughs> and good patient accessibility. Um, and you keep the floor clean for other equipment. Uh, and of course, both sides of the table for full body imaging. And the anesthesiologist is uh, happy with such a uh, setup. Uh, because there's also ample space, uh, good space for the anesthesia. Uh, it's flexible, as I mentioned, uh, not only the ceiling-mounted uh, C-arm, but also the, uh, uh, the tables, um, and a very predictable movement. Uh, so the revenue is provide better care, but that's usually a little difficult to convince your board of your hospital, they say, okay, you should take care of the better care. But the efficiency is uh, usually um, coming with some finances, and that then turns into be quite interesting for the uh, uh, board of uh, directors. An increased capacity and efficiency for multidisciplinary approaches and procedures. And um, I started mentioning that quite early in my presentation, but this is... Um, uh, the focus, if you uh, uh, start uh, introducing hybrid ORs in your hospital and don't have enough patients to um, program the full five or preferably six days per week that the hybrid OR is running from seven in the morning to seven in the evening. If that is not the case yet, because you don't have those many vascular cases, please join other specialties because Hybrid procedures are not exclusively for vascular surgeons, but also for the other specialists I just mentioned. And together, you might be able to get a better result than only by yourself. The advanced imaging uh, is shown here, some, some slides about this. Vessel Navigator will shortly touch upon that. Uh, the 2D perfusion, that's a new system to look at the chances for uh, success of uh, peripheral procedures, the expert CT, expert guide also, and the 3D roadmap. 
Um, the challenges in aortic repair procedures, um, you want to have more information. The sizing of the stent is, of course, uh, uh, of high importance, but also uh, you need 3D. Actually, 3D is a prerequisite. Otherwise, it takes you way too much time, and 3D uh, perspective of side branches is extremely helpful in getting all these side branches in the right places. Um, and a um, large amount of uh, contrast medium is usually uh, uh, required, so uh, if you can reduce that by the uh, features of your uh, uh, imaging, that is a great uh, gain. The vessel navigator reduced that need for contrast medium uh, in the fenestrated and branched uh, procedures. And um, reusing the pre-acquired uh, either CT or MR uh, reduces the need for contrast um, in the enhanced runs. Um, the CTA image fusion guidance uh, then shortens the procedure time and um, intuitive and easy to use, as you can see here at the booth, when you visit the booth. Uh, bringing back the 3D anatomy, as in open surgery, is the ultimate goal. A novel tool for three-dimensional road mapping reduces radiation. This was a publication um, from uh, Mark Schermerhorn's group in uh, Boston. He is a regular visitor to the Philips facility in Eindhoven in Best also. Um, and uh, he uh, published about uh, the vessel navigator and showed that um, the contrast uh, and the procedure time and the fluoro time and the radio, uh, radiation dose, as you can see on this slide, uh, really benefit from optimization of the uh, imaging techniques, uh, including the three-dimensional road mapping. It's important. Then I would like to touch upon this. This is a... Uh, a sensitive subject, uh, in my view, because everybody knows that uh, radiation is harmful, not only for the people around the table, but also even for the patient. Nevertheless, it's like, um, you know, uh, electric cars, um, uh, stop smoking, etc. Everybody knows it, but not everybody is willing to accept it and create joint efforts to uh, really re reduce uh, radiation. Nevertheless, I think that, uh, for example, those ambassadors like uh, Ted Dietrich from Arizona, Phoenix, who have uh, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, the, the bad side effects from overdoses of radiation in a lifelong career, uh, show that we all together should not only talk about low-dose radiation, but also um, effectively work on it and uh, uh, include presentations at meetings about um, the harmful uh, side effects of overdoses of radiation. So lowering radiation should be included in our goals to get an optimal uh, hybrid OR. Um, having said that, Philips developed the Clarity IQ technology and um, that is uh, to keep the same imaging quality, to make the shortcut in the whole talk, to keep the imaging quality, but with lower radiation. And um, as you can see here on the slide, significantly lower dose across clinical areas, and patients and the operator um, uh, are benefiting from it, reducing long-term health risk for physicians and staff. That is key, and as I mentioned, we have to, gather, to, to work together, and it might even be included in, um, well, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but in political programs, because without the support of our um, political uh, uh, people in the government, um, we cannot do this alone. The technology is able to 83% re dose reduction in the endovascular applications. I show, um, I go a little bit quickly through this. Uh, the most important of this is that um, the Allura Clarity is able uh, to keep a clear view of your arterial and venous uh, pathology, um, but with much lower radiation. 
and this was also a, a nice publication and worth uh, to read in uh, interventional radiology just last year. Uh, as I said, 83% uh, reduction, <coughs> um, and it comes from, for example, the the, the DEP is, uh, is is amazing, and also uh, uh, the A key uh, going down to uh, 464 um, uh, and and 1.2. Uh, gray per frame. Um, as I mentioned, um, we are very happy with this uh, system in our hospital. Um, you can move everything aside, as you can see here at the very end of the room. Uh, we are here at the foot end and uh, the head end of the patient. Uh, enough space for anesthesiology. Both sides, uh, the physicians can work on the patient. Um, and um, if you wish, you can uh, put the system completely aside and bring it in uh, the procedure as uh, at any moment uh, preferable. Technology has come a long way from zones, from the catheterization in the arm, not to um, mix up with uh, Seldinger. Zones was the world's first coronary angiogram in 58, now in 2016, but it will not finish in 2016. Um, continued close collaboration will make our future and consequently the future of our patients brighter. And I thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.